So, an update in the Savannah, Soto, and Matthew Guerrero case. Um, I just want to say, first off, I don't really like that Matthew doesn't get honored as much. Because even though he was doing bad stuff, you know, like he was dealing drugs and all that. Savannah was doing it with him. She was complicit in it. Like they found her phone and that's how they tracked the guy that they were supposedly going to be selling to. So yeah. she was fully aware. She knew what was going yeah, on. But- she was complicit in it. She took pictures with him with the money and stuff. And yes, she's pregnant. And what happened is super, super tragic. Dealing drugs, doing stuff like that does not warrant what happened to them. What happened to them was absolutely disgusting and horrible. And the family that are, are being held accountable for this deserve the full extent of the law. Yeah, the only thing is her family came out and started speaking <coughs> up. His family only spoke out uh, to defend That's themselves. not true. Are you sure? That's Yeah, I know that for a fact. Okay, the who thing, came out and spoke up then? So his family, came, his mother and brother came out looking for him around the same time Savannah said. I think maybe Savannah's mother came out first because... She was literally like at the hospital waiting for Savannah or and like, why isn't she here? Why is she not showing up? You know, and she's pregnant and about to be induced. So obviously a mother's going to be panicked. My daughter's supposed to be here. She's supposed to be having her baby right now. And I can't get a hold of her and I can't find her. Yeah. So I think that's why Savannah's parents came out first. But Matthew's parents came out right after that and wanted to find him, too, after learning that nobody could get a hold of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they did speak up because of Matthew's past and supposedly putting hands on Savannah and dealing drugs and did defend themselves because people started levying accusations against his family. Um, and I didn't feel like that was fair at all. Like, not at all. No, but there's a right way to bring up concerns in a wrong way. I would be lying if I said that I wouldn't have made that jump too, knowing there was a history of abuse because of the statistics yeah. in law enforcement. I agree. That is the smart decision to make. And just yeah. to throw myself under the bus here, uh, do you remember that update we did where that girl was found in the bathtub and you, you were talking about um, how – you don't think the mom did it. And I was like, dude, that would be my number one go-to was the mom because it was a mom and a daughter living in there and they hadn't found the video the of the cheerleader and stuff. Yes. Well, the mom didn't do it and it is an horrible story. And yeah. that's one of those situations where, you know, we, multiple times we've been wrong looking at the family. However, I still would look at the family first because of statistical data and probability. Yeah, so. you look at the closest people to the victim first, always. Like, they have an incentive, you know? Like, they're the ones with the tightest bonds and would have the most incentive to do something a lot of times. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even make that <laughs> jump because of that. That's not even important to me. It's the statistics of probability around it being a family member. That, yep. that literally guides my decision in any case to try and stay hyper objective as much as possible and not subjective because how sad to, to see those situations where a family member hurt another family member. Um, but statistics say they're most likely to be a family member. So yeah. Well, anyway, getting into it, the update is, is that a third person has been arrested in Mm. this case, and it is the stepmother, uh, Murda. She, oh, Murda Romano. So, it was her gun used in the crime. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And she was hiding the gun, and the police found it. (laughs) And uh, also, she is the towel lady from inside the truck who was throwing the towel to the kid's father, the 19-year-old who is said to have actually ended Savannah and Matthew. Um, Jeez. Yeah. 
So she's charged with abuse of a corpse, alter, destroying, and concealing um, a human corpse, and tampering with evidence. Um, she is, again, the stepmother of 19-year-old Christopher Persado, um, and his father, ooh, Ramon Persado, who's 53 years old, has also been arrested. It is a whole family affair. Now, get this. She claimed she didn't remember anything from that night when she first got arrested. Well, so Christopher and his father are open and, and telling all, but obviously it's a lie because Christopher's claiming that Matthew pointed the gun at him. And then he, he somehow maneuvered it back on him and ended up shooting Savannah and then Chris or Matthew pointed the gun at Christopher again, and then he manipulated it and pointed at at Matthew and killed him next. Yeah, but both of their wounds story. are to the back right side of their head behind the ear in the same exact place from the same angle. So that doesn't make sense. Um, clearly, he's lying. But then the mother gets arrested last and is like, yeah, I don't remember anything. I had no idea what happened. Well, what's interesting is the mother would have had time out then to see how that story was holding up in society. She might have realized yeah. like, oh, this isn't working. Their mm -hmm. idea is not working. I need to change it up. And the best thing I can do is stay quiet, which look. I hope they get convicted. What a horrible, horrible, <laughs> awful situation. I want them to be convicted. But. If you're looking at from a criminal's point of view, they should have never talked. If they really wanted to have a strong possibility of getting off, they should have just never talked and been like, I didn't kill him and I'm not talking to you about what happened. Well, here's another thing. Murda apparently has multiple lawsuits against her for debt. I mean, She's over her head in debt. Remember we talked about this being a robbery? Yeah. And the whole family is somehow involved in this. So it makes me question with Matthew flashing money online, you know, I want to know because we we've all heard about Matthew's Telegram and supposedly he sold stuff through social media and online and stuff, but the contact was made it seems like through Savannah's phone because that's how they tracked it, it back to Christopher and his family. So what, like, did they already know him already or did he reach out through a social media profile because he saw him with a bunch of money and is like, oh, I want to, we're going to rob that guy. Like what is going on here? Because supposedly Matthew and Savannah drove to Christopher's house and his parents' house to sell him marijuana. And then this happened. Yeah. And then the whole family covered it up together. And, yeah. and he had his mother's gun on him. Yeah. And it already, so that already doesn't make sense with his story because he claimed Matthew pulled the gun on him. Then it would have been Matthew's own gun, not mm -hmm. Christopher's mom's gun. Yeah. I think it's an, obviously these are like level one, the lowest of low criminals. Um, I mean, experience wise, because this is all just really basic stuff. It's stuff that like if you if if society has a, an image of what a criminal is like. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you just mean that's they're not involved average, in organized non intelligent criminal. You don't even have to be an organized crime. I've known people that were more up on their criminal game than that. You know what I mean? Just that is a really, really awful excuse. And I'm glad it's awful because now they're going to be convicted very easily. A jury will easily look through any of those uh, lies and, and stories and just the general fraud that they're trying to claim is true. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't even believe he tried to use the self-defense argument. like. Dude, you must have no idea about anything to do with crime or murder convictions or anything. Like, you can't shoot two people on the back of the head in the same exact spot. You're probably sitting in the back seat and try to rob. Like, I'm curious, did he rob them? 
Was the money and the drugs gone? I really want to know that. And I think they took Matthew's phone because they couldn't find Matthew's phone. And apparently his brother claimed that after Matthew had already passed, he went on something to text him. I don't know if it was just the regular messenger app and the three little dots popped up Mm. like someone was going to text back. Mm. Like, I'm really curious. Did they actually, did they get robbed? Were things taken? Like, did he go there to make a drug deal and have no money on him and no drugs when they found him? For me, it wouldn't, it doesn't matter to me. I, I don't care if, it, it just helps paint the real story, the picture. Oh, helps yeah. Paint the the, picture real, for the story real story is already just he ended them. <laughs> the the why, in my opinion, doesn't matter because there's nothing in life that warrants doing something like that to people. Yeah. So, like, literally, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me if he went there to rob him. It doesn't matter to me if uh, it, it was a disagreement and they were like, you know what? We're not going to sell to you. And then that's what caused like none of that is important to me as much as the investigators doing a thorough and complete investigation to make sure a hundred percent sure that these people do not get off. Yeah, I agree with you, but in a, in trial, you know, the prosecutor has to form a story. Um, They have to form their theory and sell it to the jury. So I'm curious what that story is going to be. And if it was a robbery, um, if they indeed got robbed, uh, cause it wasn't a drug deal, just gone bad. Like some, there's something more to it. Um, he definitely didn't try to defend himself. Like he had the forethought to grab his mother's gun. Yeah. So it makes me think it was probably planned and it's really interesting. His family's involved. How did they get involved? You know what I mean? Um, was it just after a phone call? Like, Hey, please help. I'm in a bad spot or did they plan it with him? I'm really curious about that. And that could add conspiracy to their charges. That could add more charges, but I want to know what you guys think. Um, What's your theory on how this all went down? Um, And just, what do you think about the case? I mean, it's absolutely horrible and I really feel for their family. You know, Savannah isn't the first sibling to get murdered in their family. Um, her, her younger brother was sadly murdered only like a year before this. So condolences to them. And again, let us know what you think.